Hi, my name is Thomas Tallhelm, and I'm here today to talk about smart air. Now, first things first, I want to say I am not an expert in engineering or in air pollution. Rather, I have a PhD in social psychology from the University of Virginia, and I'm now an assistant professor at the University of Chicago. Now, my story for you today starts when I was doing my research for my PhD on a Fulbright scholarship living in Beijing. So I was living in Beijing, doing my own research in psychology, when all of a sudden the apocalypse struck. Air pollution was so bad, it was beyond index. It was so bad that the air quality index didn't even go that high. It just said beyond index. The air pollution was so bad, you couldn't even see Beijing from space. There's Beijing, or at least there's where it should be. And at this point, I started to get worried about what the air pollution was doing to my health. I started to get really worried. Now, one of the reasons to get worried is because air pollution affects our health. But the problem is that a lot of people don't understand how air pollution affects our health. I know I didn't. So for example, this is a chart showing all of the deaths that are due to outdoor air pollution from different causes. So how exactly does air pollution kill us? Now, when I ask this question when I give talks, a lot of people's first answer is lung cancer, right? We breathe in air pollution, it goes into our lungs, we know that pollution causes cancer, so I bet lung cancer is the biggest cause there. Well, it turns out that answer is correct, but it's only 14% of deaths due to outdoor air pollution. And sometimes when I give this talk, and sometimes there's somebody smart in the audience who says, ah, I bet it's other lung problems. Lung cancer is only one of the lung problems we can have out there. There's also things like COPD, bronchitis, and pneumonia. So I bet that's the major cause. They say, ah, that's right, but it's actually only another 14% of the deaths due to outdoor air pollution. So what's in that big blue part of the chart? Well, it's actually heart attacks and strokes. That's because air pollution doesn't just affect our lungs, it goes all throughout our body. It affects our, our hearts, our blood vessels, inflammation. It's really a systemic cause of problems throughout the body. So even if you don't have obvious symptoms in your lungs or in your nose, air pollution is still taking a toll on your body and on my body. So at that point, I wanted to get to know, do air purifiers really work? I mean, as a, as a researcher, I wanted to know what's the science behind air purifiers because sometimes companies will just sell us products to make money, they don't actually work. I wanted to start out and say, first, before I buy something, are, do air purifiers actually work? Now, this is a particularly important question because a lot of particles um, being reported in these studies that were pollen particles. I saw a lot of studies looking at the effect on allergies, which is what is a, a common concern in the United States. But what I was concerned about living in China is not pollen. I was considered more about what we call PM 2.5. These are the particles in smog. These are much smaller particles. These are particles that can enter deep into our lungs. Some of them can even enter our bloodstream. So I wanted to know, sure, air purifiers, they can capture pollen, but can they capture the really small particles of PM 2.5? Well, as I was trying to answer this question, um, and looking at these tiny PM 2.5 particles, smaller than even the, the red blood cells in our body, I found the research of Dr. St. Cyr. Uh, he was an American doctor living in Beijing, and his tests were great. He used what you can see here is a laser particle counter. This is important because that can detect very small particles uh, in, in the PM 2.5 range um, in our air. And so he did very simple tests in his home in Beijing. What he did is he used this laser particle counter and he tested the, the number of particles in the air in his home before and then after turning on various air purifiers. And the answer was simple. Even these very small particles reduced after he turned on his air purifier. And he repeated it many times with different air purifiers, and the answer was always in the same direction. The answer was, yes, these purifiers were capturing even the small particles of PM 2.5. And so I, at that point, I thought, great, well, my problem is solved. I'll just go out and buy one of those machines that he tested, and I can go on doing my research and living my life. So I went out to buy one of those purifiers that he had tested, and it turns out it cost over 2,000 US dollars. I was blown away. And really, it's not just that much money. I mean, you really have to double it because you need one for the bedroom, one for the living room, you add in replacement filters, and soon I'd be spending over 5,000 US dollars just to breathe clean air in my home. Now to me, that seemed crazy. And I can say, as a PhD student, I didn't have $5,000 to spend just on the air that I was breathing. 
So my next question was, why is it so expensive? Or put another way, what's inside that magic box that cost $1,000? Because I didn't know what was in there or how it worked. All I knew was that clean air came out of it. So is there something in there that's worth $1,000? Well, I've actually opened up that machine and machines like it, and it turns out they're pretty simple. The air comes in the bottom, there's a coarse pre-filter on the bottom, it's a fan in the middle, and that fan pushes air through a HEPA filter. That HEPA filter is really the key ingredient, it's the active ingredient in an air purifier. Now, those HEPA filters, they might sound fancy, but they're actually just made out of synthetic fibers like the shirt uh, this guy is wearing or the shirt that I'm wearing today. Right. Now, these HEPA filters are really important because they can capture over 99% of particles both above and below 0.3 microns. What this means is that if you have a particle in your air, a HEPA filter is going to capture it. That means PM2.5, allergens, pollen, bacteria, viruses, mold. A HEPA filter will capture literally all of these. Now. Okay, so these HEPA filters are really great, but does that mean there's some expensive patented technology? Well, actually, no. HEPA filters were invented in the 1940s during the Manhattan Project. Um, when America was developing the atomic bomb, researchers were concerned about uh, radioactive particles in the air, and so they invented these HEPA filters. That means this is an old technology. It's very simple. That also means that it's not the patent of a single company. Anybody can make a HEPA filter. So I thought, well, if purifiers really are just a fan and a filter, well, my first step was I had a fan at home, so I had that, and then I went on to Taobao uh, in China, and I bought a HEPA filter for a little over uh, 100 RMB. And I said, if purifiers really are just a fan and a filter, then what if I take a fan and a HEPA filter, and voila, there we have it. That's the first DIY air purifier I ever made in my apartment in Beijing. Now you can see this is not a fancy machine. It is just a fan and a filter. And I didn't even have anything to attach the, the filter to the fan, so I actually used a Taylor's tape measure, you can see there, uh, to strap it on. Now, what I did when I had this was very simple test. I just put this next to my bedroom every night when I went to sleep. Now, before I went to sleep, I turned it on, and when I woke up in the morning, I turned it off. And every week, I took a picture of the HEPA filter. So this is what it looked like at the beginning, what it looks like after five weeks in my bedroom. Now when I saw that, oh man, I was, I was blown away. I mean, on the one hand, I was super happy uh, to see all those particles captured in the filter. It's also scary to think that those are the particles that were in the air that I was breathing, right? But again, as a PhD student at the time, I wondered, uh, does this really prove what I think it proves? Now, this certainly proves that there are particles captured in the, in the filter, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's capturing the really small particles of PM2.5. I mean, maybe these are just large particles. So what I did next was I went out and I bought a laser particle counter to do my own tests. Now, at this point, my friends made fun of me because I spent about $300 on this laser particle counter, whereas the air purifier cost me about $30. So my friends made fun of me for spending more on testing equipment than on an air purifier. Uh, but to me, it was, it was worth it. Once I got this laser particle counter, I did really simple tests in my room. I put the particle counter on one side of the room, I put the purifier on the other side of the room, and I would test it uh, in my room. And so, for example, if we look at particles that are 2.5 microns in size, here's what happened in about an hour inside my room. You can see the particles went down. Now, over a longer test, about nine hours, this is what happened to those 2.5 micron particles after I turned on the air purifier. So we can see that trend continues and then it stays low all night. Now as any good scientist, I wanted to do this test again and again and again, and of course it, the results looked similar uh, no matter when I did it. Now I was just talking about 2.5 micron particles, but what about those smaller particles? This laser particle counter captures down to 0.5 micron particles. So what about those smaller particles? Well, here's a test with those smaller 0.5 micron particles. So here's what happened after I turned on the air purifier. So the data showed that even for these really small particles, the HEPA filter 
the simple DIY purifier was capturing these really small particles. Now, on average, over multiple tests in my room, it removed 84% of those small 0.5 micron particles and 92% of those 2.5 micron particles. But the next question I had was, what if we use a stronger fan? I mean, that fan that you saw there is a pretty small, pretty weak fan. So I went back to Taobao and I bought every fan that I could find on Taobao as long as it had a flat front where I could put the, the HEPA filter on. And after finding all of these fans and after testing all of them, there was one fan that came out clearly the winner. I called it the Canon. I called it the Canon partly because, well, it looks like a Canon. And second, because this thing just kicks particulate butt. I mean, check out what happened after turning on the Canon. I mean, particles went down and just stayed down all night. Now, after that, I couldn't stop. And next, I wanted to know, how does this compare to those really expensive purifiers that I had considered buying? So I went out. And I had friends who had more money than me lend me their expensive purifiers. And so I tested the three most popular purifiers on the market at that time, a Blue Air, a Philips, and an IQ Air. And I did directly comparable tests. So we're talking same room, the same particle counter, and the same method for all of these different purifiers. And here's what I found. So I showed you before that the original DIY got 84% of the small particles and 92% of the larger particles. Now, the Blue Air did a bit better than that, 90 and 96%. The Philips did a bit better than that, 93 and 96%. The IQ Air was about the same. And the Canon removed just as much particulate as those expensive brands. Or, put another way, we can contrast the effectiveness with the price. So here's that effectiveness I graph that I just showed you, those results. And on top of it, I'm just going to put what these machines cost. You can see an immediate difference between what these machines cost and what we're actually breathing. And at this point, I thought, wow, if, if people could just see the data on how effective these different purifiers are and what they cost, I don't think there'd be anybody out there who would be spending thousands of dollars just to breathe clean air. Put another way, for one of those IQ airs, the cost of just one, you could fill your home with DIY air beer. I mean, you could put multiple in every room. You could put them on the walls. You could put them on the ceilings if you want. You could put 70 of these throughout your home. Right? Now, after I did these tests, my friends told me, oh, don't, don't give out this data to other people. Or, you know, use these, these tests that you've been doing to, to make money. You should go out and make money. But to me, I decided that wasn't really what I wanted to do. I mean, it seemed like there were already lots of people using this technology to go out and make money, and we didn't need just another person trying to make money off of other people's health problems. So instead, what I did is I put all of the tests, all of the data, everything that I knew, I put it up online for everybody else to see. And soon enough, um, the media started covering it. So CCTV, BBC, um, the Bloom Bloomberg News, uh, media started reporting on this graduate student who was making these DIY purifiers to deal with the air pollution um, in Beijing. After that, I worked with a, a local organization in Beijing called the, the Beijing Energy Network. And I said, hey, can I, can I come give a talk uh, at your group about um, these tests that I've been doing? And they said, sure, but why not do a, do a workshop? And, and so if you do a workshop, you could actually show people how to build this themselves. And so I thought, oh, that's great. So we hosted workshops with the, the Beijing Energy Network um, and had 60 people show up, 60 people built DIY purifiers, I explained the tests, explained the data, and then they took the purifiers home with them. Um, it was great to build, uh, to build these purifiers with people and to, to get them breathing clean air right away. Now, after I did these workshops, uh, people started to send me emails. People said things like, oh, I can't find the right fan, or uh, I'm too lazy to do it, or which, which HEPA filter should I buy? Which ones are really trustworthy? So at that point, I realized there was, a, there was a gap between simply telling people how to do something um, and actually providing it for them. And so at that point, I teamed up with a couple friends of mine, and we started a Taobao store. Uh, we called it Smart Air, um, smartair.taobao.com, and we put the Canon and the original DIY purifier up there uh, for 200 RMB. We made them ourselves, and we just shipped them directly to people. Now, after a few years, we've actually shipped over 50,000 of these DIY purifiers to people who want clean air all over China, right? Now, after we started uh, shipping these DIY air purifiers, I got to, to thinking again. I said, wait a second. Now, if, 
air purifiers really are just a fan and a filter, what if we use a bigger fan and a bigger filter? Would that lead us to an air purifier that's actually better than that really expensive uh, Swiss imported uh, air purifier? So that's exactly what Smart Air did. So we took a fan um, that was 10 times uh, larger in terms of air output as that original DIY, and we took a HEPA filter that was 10 times the size of that HEPA filter. We said, well, if we just multiply everything by 10, perhaps we're going to get a way better air purifier that could help even more people. Uh, and that's what we created. We call them the blasts in English and the uh, da pang and the xiao pang uh, in, in Chinese. And the results were really amazing. One blast purifier puts out as much clean air as almost two of those imported Swiss IQ airs. I mean, that's, that's amazing, right? And if you compare the price, it's still just a small fraction of the price of the, the Swedish or the Swiss imported machines, despite the fact that it's putting out lots more clean air. Now, you might say, oh, of course, right, well, it puts out more clean air, but, but surely it's, it's noisier um, and, and louder than those imported machines. Well, it turns out it's actually quieter. That's what happens when you use a very large filter and a large fan. So what I hope I've convinced you of today is that clean air or protecting ourselves from air pollution doesn't have to be uh, a luxury, right? Everybody should be able to protect themselves from air pollution, and we shouldn't let uh, greed or profits try to convince us otherwise, right? Try to convince us that uh, clean air really needs to cost thousands of dollars. Thank you for listening, and breathe safe. Bye now.